Okay, my awesome friends, I think, I think we have established, first of all, what the run is. The, 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 the run variable is going to be miles. We're tracking how much these things cost per mile over time. So there's going to be, that's going to be our variable down here. Okay, we just figured out the V6's variable cost too. And what I'm going to do actually is instead of just typing 0 0.109, I'm actually going to type it equals 2.5 divided by 23. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, it gets us a little more precision in the uh, calculator. I'm going to press enter too. And if we're feeling saucy, we're going to go ahead and change it to dollars. There we go. Okay. Um, the reason is twofold. First of all, so um, we get more precision. But secondly, so you get used to, again, um, using formulas in Excel because we're going to use these more and more as, as time goes on. And this just gets us more and more used to it. Okay. For the hybrid, it's not going to be 34. It's going to be 2.5 divided by 34. And when we do that, you'll notice, yes, it costs less money per mile to drive the hybrid, but you knew it would. You knew it was going to cost less mile, that, uh, less money per mile. That's the whole point. You, you pay more up front, but it costs more overall. So when you look at the graph over here, it might be a little hard to see, but this line is less tilty than this line. It's a, not a very good mathematical word, but it's got a smaller slope, 7 hundredths versus 11 hundredths. The only problem is over 5,000 miles, it does not, it doesn't make a difference. Actually, you, if you're only going to drive a car for 5,000 miles, there's no way you'd buy the, uh, the hybrid because the hybrid's going to be above the V6. So let's go out, say 10,000 miles. Okay. Still not it, they still look almost parallel. They're not, but they look almost parallel. Let's go out 50,000 miles. Okay, a little bit easier to see that the blue line is more tilted now. It's still not obvious. Let's go to 100,000 miles. I forget what the average number of miles people... Ah, now you can really see it. You see how far apart they are here? And they're getting closer. That means they're going to intersect somewhere. Okay. So let's go out to 200,000 miles. And again, I forget what the average number of miles driven by Americans is per year, but you know what? It doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't matter because an average number of miles driven by Americans won't help you decide. So let's just put 200,000 miles in and let's see. Aha! We have, my friends, an intersection. It's right there, roughly right there. And that looks to be right maybe at about 180,000 miles. So after 180,000 miles, the hybrid becomes cheaper to purchase and run than the V6. 180,000 miles. 180,000 miles. So what does that tell you? That tells you that if gas prices stay at $2.50, which who knows if they will, but if they stay at $2.50, it will take 180,000 miles before the hybrid becomes cheaper to buy and run than the V6. 180,000 miles is the break-even point. So the question, should we buy the hybrid or the V6? It depends, just like it always does. It always depends. It always depends. And there's other things it depends on too, which I want to wrap this video up with, but I just wanted to make sure that based only on cost per mile, and the fixed cost, $180,000 is the break-even point. I'm going to have you calculate some other break-even points based on different costs of gas uh, in, the, uh, in the optional homework. Um, and I, I encourage you too. I, I used to encourage my Math 58 class to figure out how much it costs you to uh, drive your own personal vehicle exactly one mile. It's kind of it's kind of enlightening when you actually look at it. Um, okay, back real quick to a wrap-up over here. Let's get this in the right way. Here we go. So uh, a couple things to think about. Um, that I, I don't understand the statistics behind it, but if you buy a hybrid vehicle, sometimes insurances will actually give you a cut. You may have noticed that one of the costs we did not look at, uh, we looked at purchase cost and gas cost. We ignored insurance costs. Um, and sometimes some insurance, I looked it up, travelers and farmers are two examples, uh, give discounts um, just for owning a hybrid vehicle. And some other ones also give them safe driver uh, status. So in other words, some insurance companies give you a benefit for buying a hybrid. Um, I don't know 
what the logic is there, except for the fact that they probably have data on accidents or, or misdemeanors or whatever, speeding tickets, crashes, whatever. And maybe there's evidence that hybrid drivers have fewer accidents or get fewer tickets than V6 drivers. I don't know. I don't know what the logic is there, but you can ignore that for purposes of our class. Um, you might not want to ignore it in the purposes of life. And last but not least, I'm going to mention this here. We're going to come back to it. What if the batteries run out? One of the big things that people worry about with hybrid cars is um, when the batteries die, having to replace the batteries that run the electric engine can be very, very expensive. Um, and, you know, so for example, if we go back to the, the, the uh, spreadsheet, you know, this could be doing great. You could be chugging along and you're like, oh, I'm getting close. And all of a sudden the batteries might die right here. And then you've got to spend, I don't know, 70,000 bucks to replace the batteries or whatever it costs, 7,000, probably not 70,000, but like 7,000 bucks to replace the batteries. And all of a sudden you're up here and then it's going to take you a lot longer to catch that blue line. Um, I have an, uh, a Friday optional quiz that you can look at later to address that point. And we'll get to that later if you want to, if you're interested. That's one of those choose your own adventure type quizzes. Okay, I think that's enough for right now. You can try the homework and we'll catch you later.